Sorry, um, I will first start from uh, uh, diagnostic criteria of uh, ET and uh, prefibrotic myelofibrosis. Okay, so these are the 2016 WHO diagnostic criteria for essential thrombocytemia. A platelet count in excess of uh, 450. Very important is uh, bone marrow biopsy, showing an increased number of megakaryocytes with many abnormalities. But it's extremely important to underline that there should be no significant increase in granulopoiesis or erythropoiesis, and uh, no fibrosis. Normally, in most patients, uh, the bone marrow of patients uh, with uh, essential thrombocytemia is hypocellular, with just an increased number of uh, megakaryocytes. Then we should exclude uh, chronic myeloid leukemia and additional uh, myeloproliferative disorders. And very important is uh, the presence of a clonal marker. JAK2, about 65% of patients. Color, about 20-25%, or MPL, 5%, and uh, we have about 10% of patients without uh, any clonal marker or, or, say, with very uncommon clonal markers, uh, such as atypical uh, mutations in uh, JAK2 or MPL. Uh, and there is a, a minor criterion and the uh, diagnosis of ET requires meeting all four major criteria or the first three plus the minor criterion. Prefibrotic myelofibrosis is uh, really a difficult diagnosis because it's essential an exclusion diagnosis and uh, most of uh, the diagnosis uh, is based uh, on uh, this particular feature. So increased age-adjusted bone marrow cellularity. As I told before, ET very often is hypocellular. Prefibrotic myelofibrosis is hypercellular. There is a granulocytic proliferation and often decreased erythropoiesis. Clonal marker, exclusion of additional myeloid neoplasms, and then the minor criteria are very important here because there should be at least one of these four, so anemia not attributed to a comorbid condition, leukocytosis, palpable splenomegaly, or increased LDH. And uh, diagnosis of prefibrotic myelofibrosis requires meeting all the three major criteria and uh, uh, at least one of uh, the minor criteria. Let's consider now a real patient. So it's a 51-year-old physician, very active, a researcher in uh, his field. He has uh, ET since uh, 12 years and uh, is taking low-dose aspirin. He, he came to Pavia for a second opinion. We re-evaluated uh, his condition. So hemoglobin is uh, normal. White blood cell count is normal. Platelet count is uh, high. Uh, one of the reasons why he came to Pavia was that the platelet count was increasing. He has a typical type 1 color mutation. LDH is uh, increased, while circulating CD34 positive cells are fully normal. So the only Abnormal feature here with respect to ET is the increased LDH. <clears throat> we did a bone marrow biopsy. 
cellularity is 60%. There is granulocytic proliferation with a granulocytic erythroid ratio of 5 to 1. Abnormal megakaryocytes that often form dense clusters, no evidence of fibrosis. And uh, our uh, pathologist concluded that this was myeloproliferative neoplasm with histologic features suggesting prefibrotic myelofibrosis. Uh, we discussed these, uh, these uh, uh, findings with the patient, and uh, what I told him is that having a history of uh, 12 years of uh, essential thrombocytemia, probably he was uh, on uh, the way to progress uh, to uh, myelofibrosis. This is a study we did uh, recently in patients uh, with essential thrombocytemia. And uh, we stratified patients on the basis of uh, the driver mutation. On the left, uh, we have uh, the cumulative incidence of thrombosis, which is much higher in patients with uh, the JAK2 mutation than in patients with type 1 or type 2 color mutation. But what is really striking is that the risk of uh, the co cumulative incidence of myelofibrotic transformation or risk of uh, myelofibrotic transformation is much higher in patients with a type 1 color mutation than in the remaining patients, in particular compared to JAK2 mutant patients. And uh, at uh, 12 years, so the patient had uh, ET since 12 years, the risk is between 15 and 20 percent. I uh, told him that uh, our current uh, uh, treatment of ET so the way we treat ET in Pavia is that we use uh, the risk-adapted strategy based on uh, previous thrombosis and age. But for patients needing cytoreductive therapy, we use uh, interferon as first-line treatment uh, under the age of 40. Between 40 and 60, we discussed with the patient, and uh, we use interferon alpha or hydroxyurea. And then over the age of 60, we use hydroxyurea. So the patient, a physician, wanted to be treated because uh, based on the study I showed before, he believes uh, that the risk of myelofibrotic transformation is, uh, is high having a color type 1 mutation. Anyhow, he's uh, 51, so uh, uh, the risk of transformation is high for at least uh, 20 or 30 years, additional years. And uh, since uh, he wanted to be treated, I told him that uh, interferon alpha uh, could be a good uh, cytoreductive treatment. Jean-Jacques Killer-Jean has just published a paper in, uh, in blood showing uh, that uh, the use of interferon alpha in patients with color mutant TT results in uh, not only in complete hematologic remission, but also in molecular remission in a partial remission in a subset of patients. So my position in prefibrotic myelofibrosis is that probably most patients without significant anemia don't need to be treated. And this particular patient didn't have significant anemia. But he was a physician. He was worried about the risk of progression from ET to myelofibrosis. And so 
the only available treatments for preventing the risks are interferon alpha or hydroxyurea. So my position is not no, but is a, a patient-based decision according to patients' expectations and what we know about this condition. Thank you.